you mean? <laughs> Are we going? Are we rolling? We're happening? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for coming out, uh, being with us this evening. This is, uh, this is always fun when we can do these concerts. Uh, it's rare, as you know, uh, but we love getting the chance to do them. And I uh, love that you guys are here to support it and uh, help us make sure that we can continue to do this. I'll scoot in, Jay, so you don't have to do that as much. Um, <laughs> but it, uh, it is awesome to have you guys here. And then these guys, uh, we've been knowing for a long time. And I know you guys have been listening to them for a long time, too. And we're extremely honored to have them in here. We're, uh, I'm looking forward to a weekend of lots of pancakes and uh, lots of arguments and you know, all that kind of good stuff, which is what we're all about. Um, <laughs> we have more stories we'll, we're not going to uh, get into here today. But uh, anyway, thank you guys for being here, and I'm going to get them uh, up here to start with you, and uh, we're just glad to have them here. So please make welcome Kenny and Amanda Smith. tune that he wrote for Flat Picking Guitar Magazine's daughter. She was four years old at the time that he wrote this, and I think she's probably out of college now. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Her name was Emily, though, and this we'll get, to get him to play this song for you. It's called Song for Emily.
right, here's a tune that's uh, off our new album. It's uh, <coughs> We uh, live by Nashville there, and uh, about every week you'll see somebody with a guitar case there standing on the side of the road, and they're either coming into town or leaving. And uh, this is a song about that. It's one called Every Pilgrim Needs a Highway. drawers down there and I work on wristwatches a little bit there and I had about 15 or 20 of these wristwatches that didn't run and everything and I got the bright idea I thought man I'll make me a belt out of these old wristwatches and so I hooked them all together and uh, I put it on there and I was standing in front of the mirror and I was looking at myself and I thought god what a waste of time <laughs> he's not laughing <laughs> you laugh do you laugh at our jokes? Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Well, I'll wait till the laughter dies down. We got a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we did a song here. Sandy Brothers song called uh, John Henry Blues. <laughs> Stay in bed. 
Henry felt it, Lord, Lord. Go where John Henry felt it. Sometimes when we ask that, nobody does nothing. It kind of scares us. <laughs> we are in love, and we got a lot of love songs. And, uh, Kenny's so gracious, he watches the Hallmark Channel with me. <laughs> <laughs> and the Christmas season has started, so, yeah. What a guy, huh? What yeah. a guy. Taking one for the team, guys. Taking uh, yeah. one for the team. Guys. Sure, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. He doesn't do it. Anyways, this is uh, back to the song. It's a love song, and it was our first number one in bluegrass, and David Wilcox wrote the song, which is a great artist, one of our favorites, and uh, it's called Catch Me If I Try. I'm afraid that I might 
truck my dad used to own it was a 1950 Studebaker and uh, I grew up in Indiana and uh, I made him right there in South Bend Indiana and uh, when I grew, uh, was growing up there as a little kid I we always seen these cars and trucks and everything and uh, me and my dad went to the uh, museum one day and that night I came back home and wrote this flat picking tune and uh, we'll see how see if we can get the Studebaker started to here <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, one, two, three.
song's really hard <laughs> for me. I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, and then it don't help when there's musicians in the room. But, uh, oh, thank you. It's those things like chords, you know, you miss one, then the other one, I, you know, it's just minor, but... <laughs> but uh, I'm like a haunted house. You never know what's around the next corner, and Kenny loves that, because it's fun. <laughs> what you do when you've been married 23 years. What do you feel on the phone? Yeah. All right, we'll do you a new song. We've been uh, in the studio working on a new album and uh, hoping to go in in January and finish it. This is the first time we've ever, we've never been able to go in and finish a full album because it's been so busy this year touring, which is great. And uh, But we hope to go in in January and finish a a new K and A band album and get that out. But we did manage to get this song done and get it on radio. And uh, so, if you're a DJ and you've spun this song or requested this tune, we really appreciate it. Zachary Alvis and Jonathan Buckner wrote this of Chosen Road, and it's another love song. It's called Feeling a Fallen. <laughs> Gary Brewer, and uh, he 
he's from the great state of Kentucky, and he apparently had the blues one time in Kentucky and wrote this song. It's a great tune. And uh, I personally never had the blues in Kentucky because there's a Dairy Queen on the Kentucky and Tennessee line. <laughs> True. And uh, I know when I hit that line, I'm close to home and I get ice cream. So. But Gary had the blues, and we'll do this one for you now. this a little bit. It's a uh, one called Leather Bridges. Y'all enjoying the Donnie and Marie show so far? I've been under these lights. My hair is getting bigger by the minute. We'll poke Kenny in the eye here in a minute.
over here doing all this fine guitar playing and singing for you tonight. He comes to you from Indiana. Started playing guitar when he was three or four years old. His uh, dad caught him trying to play on a guitar and taught him three chords and he had him the next morning. He said he uh, took his guitar to school and could play for show and tell but he couldn't read or write yet. <laughs> In kindergarten. So, But uh, he has been nominated at IVMA for the past 20 years but one year and won twice. Mr. Kenny Smith. do you tune here that uh, Julia and Way Maynard out of uh, Flint, Michigan used to do this song and they, uh, I think they wrote it and, uh, and uh, we put this on our gospel album and uh, that album was nominated for a Grammy and uh, we got to go out to uh, LA down there and we got our pictures standing on the remnants of the red carpet the bad stuff they cut off of it. And, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, you can imagine a couple of hillbillies. <laughs> oh yeah, Man. go to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, uh, got to go out there, but they treated us really good out there. And uh, got to looking at the booklet. You know, there's people like Jerry Lee Lewis, Snoop Dogg, Beyonce on the program there, and we were the only name on the booklet there we didn't recognize. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, do you want here? First, it's about the first day of heaven. Why don't you sit in? Well, I can't sit in, but I've just got to heaven and I gotta walk the Why don't you sit in? Well, I can't sit in, but I just got to dip in and I gotta walk Why don't you sit in? Well, I can't sit in, but I just got to have it, and I gotta walk around. Come, children, let's go see. 
What kind of hands for you and me? I sit you up on the throne. Aren't you glad we made it home? Sit in. Oh, I can't sit down. Oh, sit in. Oh, I can't sit down. Why don't you sit in? Well, I can't sit down, but I just got to heaven and I gotta walk the ground. Oh, I can't sit down. Oh, sit in. Oh, I can't sit down. Don't you sit in well, I can't sit down But I've just got to heaven And I gotta walk Steel House. gospel tune here for you. This is one that Tammy Pockstaller wrote, and she's from Alabama. We recorded this a few albums back, and we're getting ready to record another one of her songs. And uh, She's a great writer, and uh, she sure wrote a great song when she wrote this one. Getting hooked back up? Yep, I'm getting hooked up. You're not bothering me, you're right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, lo I love to talk. <laughs> Yes, I love tuning time. It's my favorite time. <laughs> there should be a song about that. Come on. It's called Jesus King of Heaven. with me. 
bear the stormy clouds together as you bled in suffering soul. Was I there with John and Peter when the empty tomb they found? Was I there when doubting Thomas touched your side and song for you and uh, we've got our CD set up over here and we've been going for 20 years so it's like a yard sale you'll find a little of everything and uh, and currently lipstick I started selling lipstick Rhonda and Sally got me into the uh, lip scent stuff so if you like lipstick that doesn't come off ladies it's the stuff it works and uh, so there you go that's right we'll do it. all right We'll do this song here that's, uh, was, uh, Ellie Rowe wrote this one. And uh, she's a young songwriter from Nashville that we got to be friends with. And uh, we recorded this on our, our latest album. And uh, Amanda actually found the song. She uh, was at Spigma down there and they had a, she was part of a songwriter uh, Thing they had going there and she heard her sing it and thought man that'd be a good song i think that would work out for us and uh we ended up uh ended up recording it and then it went to number one and so she got her first number one i think she was 15 years old i yeah. think and uh, talented uh, talented girl there we'll certainly hear from her in the future yeah. <laughs> one two Reach 
reaching out too far. so glad you guys are here. Um, uh, they're taking a short break. There are some uh, chips and snacks and uh, some drinks back in this corner here. It's on the honor system. Uh, there is only one restroom, so take turns. I don't know how else to do that. You know, it's pretty funny. If you guys haven't noticed, uh, this is also being uh, broadcast right now live on, uh, on Facebook and uh, YouTube at the same time, so check those out. And all you out there on YouTube, hi. How you doing? <laughs> and Facebook, anyway. Yeah, stick with us. We're going to have another set. A uh, bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, by the way, she mentioned Lip Sense. Rhonda also turned me on to that stuff. Works great. You, you really, I love that stuff. I love that. Anyway, it does. It does. <laughs> anyway, go check out their stuff. We have the new t-shirts here. Uh, a couple things to mention real quick uh, before you stand up. We do have the Eastman event here next week uh, on Saturday. If you haven't come to one of those, it's awesome. We've got a bunch of new instruments and all kinds of stuff coming in. And uh, free giveaways, I was just told, oh, got a flyer, look at this, ooh, a poster, Jason made that, isn't that awesome, he's pretty good. Anyway, uh, they're giving away a free uh, Eastman guitar on that night, and a bunch of also other giveaways, so come by, t-shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. If you are an Eastman owner, and bring a picture of you and your Eastman instrument, Jason has special design t-shirts for that and you will only get those that night. So, well, maybe we'll keep them after that. I don't know. But uh, come on by for that, and uh, get up and stretch and uh, have a good time. So go, go buy stuff. Buy stuff. <laughs> All right, we're here with uh, Darren Vincent of Vincent Daly. Or that, <laughs> that brings up a question. Why isn't it Vincent Daly? Well, Jeremy, I think it's alphabetical order. I'm not sure, but D, D before V. So if it was in a library, you'd look under V and then D. You start the last name no, first. You don't want VD. You, you want DV. <laughs> <laughs> that could be why he did it. <laughs> oh, which brings us to our next question. <laughs> All right. Uh, as the Bluegrass fans know, <laughs> Darren's sister, Rhonda, is, she's known as the, uh, the queen of bluegrass. Do you have any uh, titles? <laughs> yeah, I'm the little giant of bluegrass. Little giant. Little giant. There's something. There's got to be a royalty of some sort. Can you? Would you like to be a baron? No, that's okay. I'm good at being the little giant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do it with little giant. So Darren, Darren was the producer of uh, our last CD, Simple Man. So we got to spend a lot of time in the studio with him. Darren, uh, did did you enjoy Simple Man, and why not? <laughs> I enjoyed Civil Man just fine. It was wonderful. 
So, a lot of the fans also may not know, but this is something we figured out in the studio, that uh, Darren suffers from what is uh, referred to as OCTD, or Obsessive Compulsive Tuning Disorder. <laughs> <laughs> we, were just right. we were just curious, uh, how does, how's that affected your relationship with other bands, and uh, how much time have you wasted in the studio with that, with that compulsive problem? I've probably wasted a good, uh, a good record budget on time tuning. <laughs> And uh, I'll tell you how bad I am is uh, when I seen Sia Cherry Holmes when I produced their record, every time I'd see Sia, she would just get the awfulest look on her face and turn and, and walk the other way. She wouldn't even face me. So I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a really bad at tuning. Well, it seems like it's contagious because ever since being in the studio, we've become the same way <laughs> and spend more time tuning than we do actually playing. So thanks a lot, Darren. <laughs> I, I try to help where I can. <laughs> All right, this is a, this is a question from, uh, from Jason. Okay. Uh, who between you and Rhonda, which one of you have more Grammys? <laughs> That's an easy question. <laughs> it's real easy. It's me. <laughs> I have five. She has zero. <laughs> that ain't from the lack of trying, though. I mean, she's trying her hard. <laughs> you have better edit this out. I I didn't even <laughs> expect that type of answer. Holy cow. I thought she had a couple. No, she, she deserves about, probably about 20. Yeah, that's why I thought she had some. She's awesome, though. She's been up for a Grammy, I believe, two or three times. And I really thought the last time we would we she would have won one. But um, she actually deserves it, and I, and I hope and pray that she gets a Grammy soon. Yeah, well, you made up for it there. I'll, we'll make sure we add that part. <laughs> You and Rhonda are pretty much dominating the awards uh, nominations this year at IBMA. They're up for, for just about every category. So we, were, we got to talking about it. And what, what would your feelings be about uh, naming the IBMA trophy the, the Vincent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'll tell you what, Jeremy. It's just been a wonderful blessing. And, and uh, have your peers vote for you. And to put you out front like that is just, uh, I can't put it in the words. We, Jamie and I both sat there and cried when we got the, all the nominations. And it, we did too. <laughs> Okay, enough said. <laughs> I was trying to be serious. Ladies and gentlemen, Darren Vincent of Vincent Daily, or Daily Vincent. You'll see him on the road somewhere near you. On Chap TV. On Chap TV. <laughs>
Four bottom 
<laughs> Too much fun. <laughs> Meanest clinch mountain backstep <laughs> ever. All right, we're here at the IBMA with uh, Noam Pekilny. Uh Noam is a virtuosic banjo player who's played with uh, Leftover Salmon, uh, numerous versions of the Punch Brothers uh, through the years. We've gone through a few name changes, but uh, always making incredible music and John Cowan band. That's right. And uh, it's just a privilege to get a chance to sit down and talk with you here today. We're looking forward to uh, getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, well, it's my pleasure to be here on ChapTV.com. It's uh, the uh, it's my favorite TV channel, other than uh, um, Lifetime Network. So now let's go go ahead and get to know you a little bit diff or a little bit better. Uh -huh. uh, you play with uh, the Punch Brothers. Uh, what's it like to play with Chris Thiele? Um, playing with Chris Lee is uh, is really fun. He's very challenging. You know, he really pushes you to your limit, and he also uh, um, can really inspire you to you know, just kind of bring out the best in your musicianship and, and strive to be as good as you can. That's kind of the way I figured it would be. Have you ever uh, been playing a song and just like listening to what Chris is playing and forget to change chords? Yeah, definitely. There, there's <laughs> there's some times that uh, he'll do something very bold that. It can be distracting, and you know, in a good way. But you still have to focus on the uh, on playing the chords. So it has happened. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought would happen. That's what I figured it'd be like. Now, on the uh, the I believe it was the second movement of the Blind Leaving the Blind. Uh, Chris decided to wait like 22 seconds before coming out on the mandolin, and then he only played like 12 notes. Uh -huh. well, that was pretty neat, huh? I thought that was uh, that was a very bold move. I, he was kind of taking. Um, the second movement of the blind leaving the blind where no mandolin player had ever done it, taken it before because I was thinking you know of all the versions of the blind leaving the blind I have heard um, I heard a version by uh, Frank Wakefield and he came in a lot sooner than that and then uh, he did in B flat and uh, yeah yeah the banjo player capoed and then uh, I heard uh, a virtual Sizemore version of it not Herschel but virtual Sizemore is a robot uh, with the brain of Herschel Sizemore that's been cloned. He did, he played the blind leaving the blind, and uh, he came in, I think, in two seconds. I think that's also known as Rebecca, isn't it? Yeah, it was called Rebecca. Yeah, before, it used to be in 4-4. It's called Rebecca, and uh, used to that song used to be called Rebecca. It also had, used to have some drive to it. Now it's the blind leaving the blind. Second movement, and it's changed big time. Does Chris ever, like, talk about me, you know, say, 
I wonder how Jeremy would play this part. Yeah, he seems to grunt any time that you call. Like, he'll look who it is and, and just shut it. So there's definitely a, uh, I wouldn't even call it friendly competition. Uh, it's an intimidation thing. He can be uh, really vulnerable at times, um, especially, you know, when it comes to uh, people critiquing how long it takes for him to come in on the blind leaving the blind because sometimes he just doesn't have the chops to come in any earlier than that on the second movement. So getting back to Chris, did, did you know that we camped next to each other once? He, uh, I, he never mentioned the fact that he camped next to you, but I'm sure it's come out in um, his playing or maybe in some of his uh, choices as far as fashion. Yeah, well, I, I heard that he didn't, uh, he had never played in the key of F minor until um, Frontier Ranch 1998. And it only happened because he tripped while, while playing an E minor chord and then, you know, all of a sudden played an F minor. That's a cool story. See, that's stuff we wouldn't have learned if we didn't sit down with you here today. So that's why, you know, that's why it's worth paying for this download. Oh, this is free. This is free data right here. We're giving away these these gems. Well, how am I how am I getting paid then? Uh, I guess that's about a wrap. It was good talking to you, Noam. We're glad you sat down with us. I think it's great that we got to know a little bit more about Noam Pakilny here today, and how cool it is to be with Chris Dealey. This is free. Did somebody tell you otherwise? Well, I just do. That's a pretty nice camera. Someone had to pay, uh, you know. That's why this is free. I guess that's why this is free. All right. But you can watch it. Do I get some magazines we'll give you? Maybe I'll get some on the back end. some guitar end. strings? I'll get some on the back end. All right. Well, we appreciate well, it, Noam. Thanks thank so you. much. And uh, tell Chris, he, you know, he can call me whenever. Uh, yeah, I will. I, like I said, I've actually never seen him speak into a cell phone. He just looks at it and then closes it. But if he ever gets into that phase of communication, I'll have him call you. So. It sounds good. Mighty fine. Appreciate it. Jerry did this interview with Noam when he did it, and he said the whole time, he said, I'm going to sit down and talk with you, but I'm going to. All right, thank you guys for uh, for being back and coming back. Look at that, they, they all came back. <laughs> Look at that, isn't that good? Yes. It's not often, We I, well, every time Chapman's did a show, that never happened, so good for you guys. <laughs> Man, we usually get like three songs in and watch half of them leave, so good for you. We didn't leave. <laughs> well, you wanted to, we just knew who you were. So. No. Anyway, uh, thanks again for, uh, for being here. I, I told you again about the Eastman night coming up next, uh, next week. Um, there's something else. Oh, uh, Becky Bowler's going to be coming here to town. Uh, that's part of the uh, uh, Gobs uh, show series. Um, I'll get that one after a while here. <laughs> um, but uh, that one uh, should be here in Springfield as well. Becky will be in town. We're going to be uh, filming her also for the Ozark Music Shop. Uh, how many of you are watching the Ozark Music Shop? Everybody? Some of you? Most of you? All right. Well, if you're not, please start. Uh, we appreciate it. It comes back on. Uh, new season will start in November. Is that right, Jay? First Sunday in November? So we'll have new episodes. A lot of stuff that we filmed at Silver Dollar City will be there. And uh, again, want to put a shout out to Silver Dollar City, who's the Ozark Music Shop's uh, lead sponsor for next season and also uh, was doing the IBMA live stuff with us. So that was awesome to have them as well. Um, and then we're going to film these guys. These guys are going to be on, uh, hopefully, if they don't back out of this. You guys are you're, Okay. <laughs> They'll be on uh, next season as well. And then Becky will be in here filming. Uh, and doing that for the TV show. So lots of really great bands. If you haven't got your tickets, make sure to check out the Gobs website so you can get the tickets for the uh, Becky Buller show in two weeks. We should have tickets here soon. All right, we will have tickets here at the Acoustic Shop. And like I said, come for the Eastman event next week. Even if you aren't planning on being about Eastman, uh, it there's free stuff, a free guitar. I mean, I want one of those. So uh, come check that out, yeah. Kenny wants one. He's going to be here. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess that's all I have to really blab about. I, it's really funny, by the way, on the Facebook Live, every once in a while there's a tight or uh, wide shot, and there's these empty seats. And I want you to know at home, it's not empty in here. It's full. It's just all of our crowd is scared to sit up front, so they all headed to the back. I just want everybody to know. I don't know what's why you guys are so scary. Kenny would. I don't know. I don't know why. 
It's just what it is. Anyway, we're going to have him back now, and uh, thanks for being with us. And one more time, Kenny and Amanda Smith. thing when you forget to tell each other what song you're kicking with. We'll do a tune here for you that Ed Williams wrote. This was on our, um, the latest CD that we recorded, and uh, it's my favorite song to date that we've ever recorded, and I would love for somebody to uh, bring on a song that's just as good or better, because <laughs> this uh, lyrically is will always be my favorite, and it's called You Know That I Would. I could stop this world and make a brand new start, you know that I would. And I'd build you up a house in just a single day. Fill up all the rooms with all your favorite things. I lock out all the hurt that takes your smile away, you know that I would. sunshine from the perfect day. The hands to make one single ray. I like the road ahead so you don't lose your way. You know that I will. Oh, you know that I will. You know that I will. Watch them all go down the Where the crazy 
crazy ghost spins around and before you know it, you're shaking your head wondering where you've been. Bears and ain't set killing time, makes you trade what you want in life, or if you say bets it might. Virginia, the Foothill Boys was the name of the group. Uh, Bobby Harrison wrote this song and um, back in the 70s and we were fortunate enough to uh, to hear it and got a hold of it and uh, it's a great tune. And, uh, it's called It's Not the Wind. One, two, three. <laughs> Didn't think I 
It's not the pain that's making me blue. It's no one else but you, my darling. Yes, my darling. because he's married to me. I ain't scared. We, uh, we've been in Oklahoma for a week there, and, and uh, I'm not scared. <laughs> Went there to the Watonga Cheese Festival there on that air and almost got locked up. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, save your emails or Stay comments. away from the cheese festivals. That's not my Stay fault. away. Make sure you send them to him. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just trying to tune and it just sounded like it seemed like I should say that okay we will do this song okay here we go you ready <laughs> hadn't done this in a while so in just a few years <laughs> Tell me, Willie Duncan was his name, and he had a mighty long string of sad women. Oh, Willie was a devil, what a shame. Katie Lou, she was a handsome beauty from the valley, and the her hair was like unto the sun. And her eyes were blue as all the heavens put together. She was just as bad as pretty as they come. Making all the women feel bad Cruel with the ancient shame For causing all the women all the pain Willie boy was riding in his buggy one morning when Across the darling Katie Lou 
And he was so overtaken by her special kind of beauty He was barely heard to whisper, how are you? Katie Lou smiled and said, I don't believe you know me But you knew my little sister very well She was just a special kind of sweet little lady To you heard her more than words could ever tell Cruel weary, ain't you sad For making all the women feel bad Cruel weary, ain't you shame For causing all the women all the She stuck him in the belly with a knife. Now the wind flutters ever gentle through the valley at the place where we're sleeping in the ground. And the words that rolled upon the stone of Willie Duncan say, One too many women got him down. Oh, Willie, ain't you sad for making all the women feel? Causing all the women all the pain Cruel Willie, ain't you sad For making all the women feel bad Cruel Willie, ain't you shame For causing all the women all the I'm a good dancer. It's part of the Lions of the Desert team there, back in high school. I will say, we went to IHOP years ago, and uh, this is a story not many people knows. Let's put it on Facebook. Because we're here with the Chapmans, and it just reminded me that uh, we all went to IHOP one night, and I, short story, because it's a long one, but I'll make it short. I got fries and a drink for it on me, and I was trying to be really calm, and that wasn't in my nature back then too good. But uh, we got a free meal that night, so. And yeah. so the Chapmans. We fed the, us <laughs> and the Chapmans that night. So. We all ain't free, but I still don't know what I did. But anyways, careful when you go to IHOP. <laughs> you gotta, watch, gotta watch them IHOPs with the Chapmans. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was y'all's fault. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. By the way, none of us to drink or fries. No, it wasn't them. It was the waitress. <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but I just... But we're going back tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> A reenactment. Reenactment, 20 years later. <laughs> Here's a tune that I uh, heard my dad and him play this one. Uh, this one comes up from around Tennessee area there, uh, Cumberland Gap.
Fifteen dollars is my game, fifteen is my draw. Miranda Collins is my name for the state of Arkansas. Roll the dots in the rebel yard, won't get you too much shine. Working on that sex you can sure to break your back. Fifteen dollars is my game, fifteen is my draw. Miranda Collins is my name for the state of Arkansas. Hiding out by the water tank where the shade is smooth. Watch that straw ball stuff for me. Ain't nobody smooth. Fifteen dollars is my game. Fifteen is my draw. Miranda Collins is my name from the state of Arkansas. Making up a train in the Memphis yard along the Beverly Zone. Gonna ride down to Fairbanks town in the state of Arkansas. Fifteen dollars is my game, fifteen is my draw. Around the Collins is my name in the state of Arkansas. Fifteen dollars is my game, fifteen is my draw. Randall Collins is my name in the state of Arkansas. Yeah. 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 See, there was uh, written by uh, Norman Blake and uh, one of our. Uh, one of my heroes there, and uh, we uh, was going down there around Oklahoma down there and got off on this thing. Somebody was telling us about this shortcut, and uh, so we took this shortcut down there, and we got down in this holler, went down there and got in this one part, and it was this low part, got stuck down in this low part down there. Wheels just spinning. I noticed there was a farmer up there, and uh, I walked up to the farm up there, and Got this guy, and he had a Farmall tractor. Nice one, too. Nice paint job. Oh, man. I thought, well, here's my guy, you know. He said, well, I'll pull you out, but it's going to cost you $25. I was like, okay. And uh, so he, he went down there and got us pulled out. And I was talking to him. I said, man, I bet you pull people out of this thing night and day, don't you? He said, no, don't do it at night. And I was like, <laughs> You don't do it at night. I said, why is that? And he goes, well, that's when we bring the water down here. <laughs> that one came out of joke book number 228. <laughs> we'll do a Keith Whitley tune here that I grew up listening to classic country and gospel and Heard some bluegrass finally in high school my senior year and heard Rhonda do this song. Of course, I'm a huge fan of hers and I love her. And we'll do this one for you now. It's called the Birmingham Turnaround. South by any means. Thought I might blend in round New Orleans. And when the plane got off the ground, I saw you face in a cloud. Saw you 
your tears out on the pain. Don't guess my heart was free to leave. Birmingham would have to wait for a little later date. And I said I'd see you later, New Orleans. And I knew my rambling ways had seen their better days. And suddenly I had a change here. Back in your heart, I swear I am. The times we laughed and talked about. The day I did the Birmingham turnaround. all so much. We'll send that one out to Pat Myers. That's a really good friend of ours up in Ohio. I wonder if he may be watching. I don't know. Um, we'll do one more tune for y'all. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you to the Chapmans. We've known these boys forever. We were at IBMA when they came, I guess, the first time, or they were doing a lot of showcases that year, but uh, it may not have been their first year, but it was the first year we saw them 20-some years ago, and we love these guys, and and uh, so make sure you come by the store. And yeah, it's really nice. Buy Christmas gifts. That's right. Lots of them. Lots of them. <laughs> oh, so thank you all so much. And, uh, all anything right. to say, Hoss? Hey, well, got to uh, got to do some mechanic work tonight. So I got to play with one more song, do some mechanic work. I actually got to put a rear end in a recliner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You may walk away with nothing else, but you'll go, they were so funny. <laughs> Do this song here that, uh, it's uh, one, gosh, I guess heard my dad first play this, and then uh, heard Doc Watson. And mention who kicks us on the road. That's oh, what yeah, yeah. We, we got to mention all the people that help us on the road, and uh, that's Diodario Strings and uh, Sully Straps, Elliot Capos, Collings Guitars and um, Blue Chip Picks out of Knoxville. And, uh, I'm still hoping for the Little Debbie endorsement. <laughs> That'd be a good one. I would love to just fling fudge rounds out through there. I think it'd be so fun. Star Crunch. That's right. All the goodies. Wouldn't that be fun to just. That would be fun. Yeah, I just think that'd be the coolest. I'm just saying. <laughs> we don't have that yet, though. Don't have it yet. All right. And I'm sure they're listening. 
<laughs> oh man. All right. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll leave with this one called Black Mountain Rag. One time real quick, uh, and then we'll get him to do one more for you, or two more, or whatever you guys want to do. I don't care. Um, if you haven't heard enough of Kenny's uh, uh, giggle and laugh, which I haven't, uh, Kenny will be back here tomorrow doing a guitar workshop. So all you out there on uh, Facebook land, I have a few spots left for that. So he's going to be doing an uh, in-depth workshop tomorrow at 1 o'clock. So make sure to get in here for that. And if you guys haven't already got your tickets for that, it'll be an amazing, uh, I mean, Amazing stuff. So anyway, get them back one more time. Kenny and Amanda Smith. Thank you all so much. There was a day we dreamed that would happen. It's true. We used to sit there and would be like, oh, Kenny, wouldn't it be great someday if we like got called back on stage? And, uh, True story. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to us. We'll uh, do y'all a song here that I've been singing since I was really little, and we're hoping to record another gospel album in 2020, and this will be on it. And um, we'll do this one for you. It's called Where the Roses Never Fade.
Thank you all again so much for being out here. <clears throat> excuse us, or excuse me, with uh, the show. It was awesome. Um, we are so glad to have them through. We're going to try to do even more. I know we, we keep saying that. We keep getting busy, and uh, but we are going to have more events, uh, and, and I hope you guys stick with us. Um, and just thank you all for coming out tonight. Make sure to stop by and uh, pick up some more of these uh, T-shirts and CDs and lots and lots of lipstick. You gotta have that stuff. You gotta have that stuff. Anyway, so uh, check that out. And uh, I, I'm serious. I use that stuff all the time. Um, but uh, thank you all again for being with us here tonight. If you can make it for tomorrow, the workshop will be amazing. I know I've got quite a few in here. There's a few spots open. Uh, Eastman event next week. Becky uh, Buller the week after that. Um, and then we're almost in holiday season. If you haven't got on the Acoustic Shop mailing list, we have our big small business Saturday sale. It's already time to start thinking about that stuff. So uh, get ready for that. If you haven't signed up uh, on our mailing list, we do a free, uh, there's going to be a free gift card that will be in your in your mailbox. It could be anywhere, I think, isn't it, from, from $5 to $200, $500. It could be anything. It's a, yeah, we haven't decided what it's going to be, but it's a bit. It's usually big. I think it was five hundred dollars last year, and it's a mystery one. You can only use that day, and you find out how much it is when you come in. So, and big discounts. Anyway, Eastman event, big de discounts. Just come back and visit us. Thanks again to Kenny and Amanda Smith, and thank you guys for coming out. Thank you.